Thank you for joining us. Uh, Brockton Community Access and WXBR are partnering to bring you uh, one of the few looks you get for the school committee races here in the City of Champions. Today we have uh, two candidates running for an open seat on the Ward 3 School Committee. We have Alicia Jean Clark, I'm going to get this right, and Mark D'Agostino. Yeah. who are both running. And what we set out in the letters is um, we have a one-minute opening statement, a two-minute closing statement. So I will start with Alicia on the one-minute opening, and then I'll reverse it on the other end. And we'll be going back and forth. You guys will get to take your turns over and over again. So one minute, Alicia. All right. My name is Alicia Jean Clark. I'm a graduate of UMass Boston and Roger Williams Law School. I started as a mediator in the Rhode Island courts and now I work for Mortgage Master as their in-house counsel. I also run an after-school program for individuals with special needs. I do that at the Ashfield School on Tuesday and Thursday nights and I work with um, the community school program to make this available for right now middle school children. Um, my goal is not to make political promises. I find that a lot of times political promises, depending on the atmosphere, don't um, get upheld. But my goal, if I get elected, is to listen to the people in my ward and weigh their concerns with what would be the best for the children in our school system. Thank you. Mark? I'm Mark D'Agostino. I'm running for Ward 3 School Committee. Um, I uh, graduated from Framingham State College and uh, currently run a small business here in uh, Brockton. Um, it's a family business, been here since 1986. Um, and uh, also, um, I'm the third generation of my uh, family to live here in Brockton, going back to the 50s. Um, so, uh, certainly have strong roots here in the city. And um, what I'm, the reason that I'm running is that I feel the schools are the most important part of our community. Um, there's nothing more important than um, you know, how we educate the kids of the city and um, so uh, I think that I can uh, make a uh, meaningful contribution to the school committee and to the city in this way. So, Thank you. First question is Ron and we'll stick with the minute if we get into uh, more complex we'll give you two minutes. Okay, Ron, first question. So a lot of people have opinions about how school committees should be run in the school system but only a few, such as yourselves, come out and want to actually participate and, I assume, change things. What was it that gave you that push and drive to say, I'm going to do this? Start with Mark. Um, well, I think it's one of the most important roles in the city, first of all, um, uh, like I said. And, um, you know, um, it's, it's just an important thing to do in the city, to be involved in the schools. They have the ability to um, bring the whole community together. Um, they're responsible for educating the future of the city. Um, and, um, you know, having gone through Brockton Public Schools myself, um, you know, it was an opportunity to get back involved and give back um, in a really meaningful way again. Um, my. Uh reasoning for running for school committee actually started with my program running for Shining Stars. I realized that there are lots of gaps in certain areas of the educational system and you know, by working with community schools I discovered you know, there are certain areas that I felt the school committee you know, could work better maybe with the parents in the community and make changes um, to develop new programs that would help out the schools and you know work better with the teachers and parents and kind of form a unity. Um, so, you know, growing up here I always thought that there was always a way to better unite the two together. Okay, my question is about um, time and time commitment. You both sound very successful in what you do. I know of both of you. Um, do you have time to be a member of the school committee? Has anybody read you the fine print uh, before you uh, started out on this endeavor. Start with Mark. Yeah, that was one of the uh, first things that I started to look into. Um, you know, when I decided I wanted to run, I started to ask about um, the time commitment. And um, it was kind of interesting. The first thing that was I, I was told is the school committee works harder than the city council um, and has more meetings and um, more commitments, um, you know, than, than, like I said, than the city council does. 
um, between subcommittee meetings and school committee meetings and PTO and PAC meetings and, and um, you know, being out there involved in all of that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I do have the time for it. Um, you know, I think it's important and it's one of those things that it's, it's important enough that you make time for it. Okay. <clears throat> I agree with Mark. I, am, I definitely have time. Um, I've spoken with, over the past couple of years, spoken with school committee members and um, understanding their commitment of constantly running from one meeting to the next and it was definitely something that concerned me when I first decided to run, but um, I know that you know I'm a time planner and I can fit in any amount of meetings, whether it's running from one school to another or you know making the most of my time. Okay. Right. Out of what you may have followed with the school committee in the past, is there is there any decision or any direction that the school committee took that you felt was not appropriate in your mind that you didn't agree with, or not? Alicia first. Um, I think in the past some of the things that concerned me the most um, was school committee and um, maybe the interactions between the school committee and the teachers um, I don't think always has played out as well as it could have. Um, I think there should be a better connection between the schools and the school committee um, and that's one thing that's concerned me over the past but otherwise I think the school committee has played a great role and tries the hardest that they can to be involved in everything in the town. Okay, Mark? Um, you know, I know in the past um, there were uh, a lot of conflicts on the school committee um, and um, from what I've seen, um, you know, that seems to have subsided and um, uh, for the most part they're a lot more focused on getting things done and remembering why they're all there, which is to um, work on behalf of and for the students of Brockton. Um, so I, I, I think in the past there were some issues, but I think they've worked those out. Okay, my question is uh, for both of you, of course. Um, any different ways that you might communicate with your constituents um, to keep them informed or let them know what's going on in, in the system or even to get them involved? Mark. Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, I think that, um, first of all, you've got... Um, things like Facebook that you can use these days to communicate um, and email um, but also uh, you know hopefully there are ward meetings I know there are ward meetings that happen from time to time and, and being involved and being a part of that and making sure that uh, um, you know we're getting out there and, get, and, and letting people know what the school committee is working on um, the other way is and, and part of the responsibility of the school committee person is to go to PAC meetings and PTO meetings and communicate um, what the school committee is doing, um, and also listen to what uh, parents are concerned about and take that back to uh, the rest of the committee. Okay, I agree with my, I think social media, I think, would play a huge role in getting the word out to um, a lot of parents. Um, also, you know, the PAC meetings are a big part of that. But I also think um, holding, you know, p being part of events that take place outside of those uh, PAC meetings and you know going to school events and having time to talk with the parents afterwards or beforehand I think also plays a big role in that um, so I would use that time as well to get to know the issues and what the parents are looking for. Okay, I'm going to put in a plug like I do every two years for um, electronic town meetings or you, using your cable channel on school channel 98 or government channel 12 to get the word out. Uh, WXBR has uh, guests on all the time. Ron, Ron hosts a, a daily show, and uh, you know, just another opportunity. Would would either of you be interested in doing something like that? Yeah, just put you on the spot. <laughs> Absolutely. Of course. Okay. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Good. Okay. Ron, have the two of you had any quote unquote debates yet? Is this the first time that you are going back and forth together? This is the first, first time, time we've ever met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ever met. Okay. So you're not familiar with each other's viewpoints in any sense of the word? No. Okay. So I guess I would have to ask you then things that would bring that out so that the voters <laughs> can see the differences between it. You've agreed on most of what we've discussed so far, and I assume you might agree on quite a bit. Um, without having previously named anything that you wanted to overhaul the system with, uh, 
what makes you the better candidate? I know you both have impressive backgrounds, as Mark said, and you've said, but what really makes you the person? Start with Mark. Um, well, I think I bring a, a lot to the table. First of all, like I said, you know, I'm um, certainly invested in the community and um, as a member of the community. And, um, but I also, one of the primary functions of the school committee is to handle the budget and manage the budget. And uh, that's experience that I have as a business owner. Um, you know, I, I do that all the time um, on, at, at work every day. Um, as well as, um, you know, dealing with different vendors and um, um, HR type things as well. So I think I have that kind of experience that, uh, that will help me on the, on the school committee and be successful. Um, and, uh, but also, you know, I was a student at Kennedy School and sat in that lunchroom and in those classrooms and played on that playground and um, lived in the neighborhood around uh, um, uh, Huntington as well. Um, so uh, I understand the area and I know the area, um, you know, and, and so I think that will also, uh, uh, you know, help me in, in uh, serving the uh, kids in the community in Ward 3. Well, like Mark, I grew up in the, you know, I've grown up in Brockton my whole entire life. Um, I think one thing that might set me apart a little bit is over the past three years I've worked um, intimately with the school, um, community schools, and, um, you know, gotten to know people in the special ed department, um, gotten to know different people uh, on the school committee, working with them, trying to get programs in place um, for, you know, my, my focus through the past three years has been on special needs um, issues, but definitely over that time I've gotten to know a lot of the ways that programs get developed and, you know, budgetary issues as far as, you know, what we can fit in the budget and what programs have to be cut or, you know, trimmed down, so to speak, to, so that other programs can help different classes of kids in the school system. So I think that's definitely one way that I can help out. Okay. Um, we've heard a lot um, in the last few years, U.S. News and World Report, New York Times, about how successful a high school Brockton High is. What we haven't heard about a lot in the media is the middle schools. We do hear about the elementary schools with all the nice activities and different things that they do. Um, could you talk about that a little bit and if actually see if you agree or disagree with me on that in terms of what you would do to bring maybe middle schools into the forefront their you know real formative years has have what you heard um, in Brockton showed you success or not success Alicia I, I definitely think that one of our gaps in the school system right now is the middle school I think you know some of the rearrangement of the middle schools from junior highs into middle schools I think may have caused some of that gap um, but I think that focusing more programs and maybe implementing programs that are similar to those that we have in the high school um, the elective programs like focusing more on the music programs or um, shop type programs art programs would help out to establish the middle schools also middle schools their sports programs aren't as developed as the high schools so maybe a transitionary period um, in the middle school I think might help as well to you know, really promote the uniqueness of each individual in the middle schools as that's the time when you're kind of coming into your own uh, I think that would definitely help the students out yeah um, so I think you know What's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle is we've had the ultra successful high school and then um, we've had some success in, in the elementary schools. We've also had a lot of work to do in the elementary schools and uh, so a lot of focus and, resource has been, uh, and resources have gone into the elementary schools. So the poor middle schools have, have certainly gotten lost in the shuffle. Um, you know, I think that one thing we need to do is put the flashlight on the middle schools more and, and highlight the, the middle schools more. Um, but we also have to, I think, reach out and, and um, have a little more, uh, I guess, parent involvement. And the reason I say that is I took the time to sit down with Kevin Cairo, the principal over at South Junior High, and, um, and that was something that he said to me, that the biggest concern he has 
is you know that uh, there's at the middle school level there's a little less parent involvement and and so that was that was something that came from him that that he'd like to see more of so I think if we could um, get more information out there um, to the parents of middle schoolers um, as well I think that you know maybe we could get more focus on the middle schools um, so that they're not the forgotten part of the school system in our experience uh, just speaking from cable is South is a very dynamic school. Kevin's a very dynamic principal, a lot of involvement over there. Um, I always felt, this goes back a few years, that um, you got to really tap the resource there with, with the students to, to get them on the right path to, to, to right. get to high school. And now, as both of you have said, with the changes that have occurred, I mean, I, it used to be easy, north, south, east, and west. Now there's eight of them. They're mixed in. It's K through eight. And, this through five and you know it, it gets a little crazy so thank you for addressing that Ron how do you get parents involved in their kids education when a good percentage of them might feel that their kids are smarter than they are and they can't help them with homework they don't even understand what they're doing which happens with everybody actually at a point but uh, <laughs> How do you how do you make that more of an equal playing field? Maybe that's a reason that parents don't get involved as much in helping their kids. Mark first. Um, well, I think that you know even if they can't help, um, certainly having them involved in making sure you know asking what they're learning about. And uh, I'm just trying to think back to when I was that age. You know, um, you know, my parents always asked about what we were learning about in school. What had we done, you know, that week in school? Um, and uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be about helping with homework as much as just um, and and going to the school and asking questions of the administrators and teachers at the school. Um, you know, if they're struggling, it, like you said, with helping them with uh, uh, homework, maybe they can reach out to the school itself and and uh, you know work it from that angle. Um, so, I think one of the biggest things is to open up communication channels between the parents and the teachers and make sure that the information that's getting um, sent out to the students in the school actually gets home to the parents. I think that's one of the biggest gaps. I know when I was in school sometimes that stuff stayed in the bottom of my backpack. <laughs> so um, I think whether it's sending out an email or mailing it to the home, I think a lot of that might help get the parents more involved because if there's an open channel of communication the parents are more apt to talk to the teacher about what's going on, how's my student doing, um, rather than just having it in the bottom of the backpack and the kid saying, you know, I never got it. Um, so I think a lot of that. Um, and I also think having open houses where the parents can go, not a parent-teacher conference, so to speak, but more of an open, relaxed environment where the parents can go and uh, talk to the teachers and get an idea of what's going on and what their student needs to be doing would help as well. Okay, for a while um, it was interesting because your school committee member in Ward 3 um, originally wasn't sure whether he was going to go for another office or stay and stand for re-election and then all of a sudden it was like okay we need to find candidates for that office. Um, was there any burning passionate issue that got either one of you into the race for school committee? Uh, start with Alicia. It wasn't a burning issue um, so to speak. I think it was just an overall um, want to help out and to make sure that you know I've seen a lot of students over the last year kind of working in I've been working in the middle school with my program and seeing a lot of the kids kind of fall through the cracks or you know just information not getting back and forth and I really felt that being on school committee I could help out and generate some sort of knowledge or understanding and help out so that those gaps don't exist anymore or at least we close the gaps. I think that was the biggest thing for me. Mark, how about you? Um, you know, for me it was like I said, I wanted to get more involved in the community, and um, you know the schools are such an important part of that. Um, you know, in addition to obviously having the primary responsibility of of educating the kids in the in the community, um, you know they can bring the community together, and um, 
you know, it, it, it was really just about the importance of the schools in the community. I mean, if, what's the first question people ask when they're looking at moving to a community? How are the schools? It's the first thing people want to know about. So, and recognizing what a, a, an important role it is and me wanting to do something really important and, and meaningful to get back to the city, um, I thought that it was a great opportunity to, to do that. Thank you. Dropout rate is still uncomfortably high. How do you get a student, and I think, not that I'm running for anything, but I think the crux of everything is to get a student excited about education. If they don't have that excitement, they're not going to learn anything and they're just going to leave the whole environment. How do you get a student excited about education? I think one of the main things is to have, um, well, Brockton has great teachers, but there's a lot of gap, either age gap or just a cultural, there's a lot of cultural gaps in the city. I think bridging those gaps would help um, students stay in school longer. Um, also getting students more involved in programs, making programs more accessible to students. Um, I know a lot of times the kids have to get the late bus, at the, especially at the high school level, and you know sometimes that prevents them from participating in other programs. So developing a support system and allowing students to get more involved, I think, is a big um, step, you know, to prevent kids from dropping out of school. Because the more involved you are, and the more you feel accepted in the environment, the more willing you are to stay there. Um, yeah, I think there's two things that come to mind. Um, one is more involvement in various extracurricular activities and opportunities um, that are there, um, promoting those to students who. Um, you know, maybe uh, I guess the term is at risk of, of dropping out, uh, but finding what their interests are and maybe using that as a way to pull them back in um, with some of the additional programs that are available um, outside the classroom. Um, but also the other thing is maybe looking at, um, and, and I know there are some programs like this, but maybe expanding that, um, you know, four-year college isn't the right fit for every person out there and every student out there. Sometimes vocational education makes more sense. And so looking at that aspect of it too, of let's look at the individual student um, and talk to them a little bit and see if we can come up with some other options like a vocational type of uh, training um, to put them in a direction that they're going to be interested in and that they will follow through with. Um, so those are just two ideas that come to mind. Could have me talking about that one for a while. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> the Brockton School Committee makes not so I understand. Um, in terms of the relationship between the school committee and the superintendent, right now we've chosen, uh, the school committee unanimously chose to bring Kathleen Smith in here. In past years it wasn't so unanimous, okay? How important is it, um, I heard you talk about mediation, I know you do insurance, and you were trying really hard not to do a commercial for your company, so we appreciate <laughs> that. But um, talk about your skills that you have individually in terms of building consensus, working with other people, and how do you think that'll relate to the school committee? Um, I think Mark first. Okay. So <clears throat> um, I think you know a key thing is to obviously there have to have been differences of opinion. I mean, that's, if everybody just agrees, then really nothing gets done. Um, but you have to look at what you have in common um, and then discuss your differences. Um, and you just through communication and discussion, you work that out. Um, I mean, it's great that that decision was unanimous, but um, you know, a, a lot of times you're right, it won't be. And you just have to communicate openly and honestly, and um, and you know I think you can work most everything out if you just have open and honest communication with each other, and um, you know focus on the things you do agree on and have in common, um, and you know that's that's a lot of area where I have experience in, in doing that kind of uh, thing, as well as. Um, you know, looking at the person, like uh, you mentioned with uh, hiring the superintendent. Um, you know, one of the things I like is that, if I'm not mistaken, her entire career has been in the Brockton school system. Um, and so, and maybe that's why it was unanimous, but, um, 
uh, I just, I, you know, that's something that I really like about her is that, that her entire career has been here. Okay. Uh, I think one of the things is that being a mediator that we learn is, you know, nobody leaves a mediation 100% satisfied. If everybody is, you know, a little bit, you know, dissatisfied, a lot of times more things get done. You know, you have a little bit from each person that comes into the melting pot and sometimes the result is you're not all happy, but the result is a lot better than, you know, what it could have been if everybody just agreed in the initial circumstance. Um, I also, um, working for a large company, um, it helps when you have all these ideas thrown off of each other. I find the best um, things and, you know, the greatest things in the companies get done when you have a huge group of people come together and you're constantly bouncing ideas off of each other. Because that way you can, you know, oh, this little piece works, but this doesn't. And then by putting that all together, you get a, you know, the puzzle pieces fit and you get a nice picture. Okay, thank you both. I believe we have the five minute sign, if I'm not mistaken, Jay, correct? Um, so we're going to go to the closing statements. We have two minutes for the closing statements. And uh, boy, where do we, where do we start off from? I didn't know we started. Oh, he didn't know we uh, started. There we go. <laughs> Um, I have no idea. Who had opening first? Okay. Okay, so we're going to re re reverse the order. So, um, Mark, you get to go first in two minutes closing statement. Sure. Um, well, you know, one of the issues that uh, I think is important, and I'll use this to, to touch on that, is um, the facilities we have in our elementary school system. Um, they, uh, we've, we're up a th almost 1,000 students this year um, over last year. And um, we're, uh, the numbers are showing that they're struggling to keep class size manageable. And so we're going to have to address that um, in the next few years, um, whether it be uh, an addition to the buildings we have or another building, uh, you know, the, that's, there's a lot to that. Um, but that's certainly a, a huge issue that we're going to have to um, deal with. Um, <clears throat> and. So um, the other thing, too, that um, I'd like to point out is that um, you mentioned that having the time and uh, to be on the school committee, and it's a, it's a big commitment. And, um, you know, part of what I've done to prepare for that commitment is to be at the school committee meetings uh, for the last several months. Uh, PAC meetings and PTO meetings have been to those. Um, and uh, I've also had meetings with the principals of the schools in Ward 3. I asked if I could learn about uh, what their concerns were for the schools. So um, I, uh, you know, have been out trying to demonstrate my commitment to the position um, and educating myself on the issues that are going to be facing the school committee real soon, such as, um, you know, our, our aging and uh, slowly getting overpopulated elementary system. Thank you. Um, I think one of the things that um, concerns me the most uh, is the current allocation of funds. I think a lot of things could be rearranged a little better to you know, help with, as Mark said, the aging schools. I see one of them, the Kennedy School that I grew up with, you know, the facilities are getting much older. Um, and I think that's going to be a real problem in the future with how many aging elementary schools and junior highs and, and even the high school um, that we have in the city right now. Um, and another issue that I see, I know a lot of families deal with the busing issue um, of what schools are, you know, their kids are going to go to, what programs are allocated to each school, and you know, the fact that we only have programs in certain schools, and you know, such as the George School with the Spanish program. Um, I think that's going to be one of the upcoming issues is whether, you know, these programs get expanded to other schools to, you know, prevent the strain that busing puts on the city. Um, but, you know, and as far as the time issue, I know that, you know, with like my program that I run after school, meeting, constantly meeting with principals and the school committee and community schools, and that's always something that at least my job currently allows me to, you know, make time for all of those meetings and readjust my schedule. So I, you know, see no problems having time and uh, working, you know, having, creating a great working relationship with community schools and the current school committee members. 
Well, thank you both very much for participating in this. It's nice to see uh, everybody sit in a room, be civil, answer questions, get along, and uh, the voters will choose on November 5th. You're watching uh, Brockton Community Access and WXBR's coverage of the school committee race in Ward 3. Stay tuned for more election coverage.